I want to welcome uh, Tatiana Kokreva, senior journalist from Russia. We've got Colonel Ajay Shukla, well-known strategic affairs expert. Nanda Nuni Krishnan is with us, one of our top experts on the India-Russia relationship. I want to go across to Tatiana Kokreva first because this is when Prime Minister Modi and uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin will be at dinner. Um, we've spoken a lot about the expectations within the Indian government from Russia's perspective, Tatiana. Can you give us a sense of the expectations in Moscow around Prime Minister Modi's uh, meeting? This is the sixth time uh, it seems he's come to Moscow, uh, to Russia. Uh, he's been uh, in 2015, December, July, then 17, 18, 19, so this is his sixth uh, visit now. So what's your sense of the expectations in Moscow around the Prime Minister's visit? Well, it's nice to, to join you again. Uh, you know, I think that uh, first and foremost, we have to say that the Prime Minister, this time Prime Minister Modi, has been extremely lucky with the weather. Um, that he didn't catch the we've been having crazy weather before this so he's extremely lucky to have come today of all things but I think the expectation generally um, in in Moscow is uh, very upbeat you know we've heard from the Kremlin saying that we take into account the general you know fr this friendly historically friendly relationship between Moscow and New Delhi and um, the very fact that this is, if I'm not mistaken, the first foreign trip that Prime Minister is taking uh, since uh, winning the election, you know, that sends a, a message and we're receiving it out here. So very excited. Um, you know, the trade has increased during the past year. There's been so many improvements in that relationship and it's been very fruitful for both countries. So we're, we're looking forward to see what comes out of this visit. Gaurav Savant is reporting live from Moscow on Prime Minister Modi's state visit to Russia. Uh, Gaurav, um, the key expectations in all the briefings and meetings that have happened with officials from the Ministry of External Affairs, what are they telling you? What are the most likely key takeaways from Prime Minister Modi's visit to Moscow this time? Rahul, the aim of this visit is to take the relationship to a new level and keep it futuristic. Traditionally, it's been a very, very strong relationship between India and Russia over decades. Uh, from the 50s, when it started building up and gathering steam to the 1970s, you know the history, 1971 war, India-Russia pact held India in good stead through the Kargil War of 1999 and beyond. Uh, but it is not just restricted now to the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile. India and Russia want to take forward this relationship in critical technology from the drawing board stage. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as he meets the Russian President Vladimir Putin over this dinner, the aim, Rahul, is that the two talk about taking this relationship, making the transformational swift, uh, shift and switch. What does that mean? That Indian scientists and Russian scientists sit together and start thinking of futuristic technologies at the drawing board stage. That is what we were told. The students do their research together in India and in Russia build it together and then manufacture it together, some components in Russia, some components in India, and they put it together to export to the world, make for each other, make uh, it and then export it to the world like Brahmos. Space cooperation, uh, nuclear cooperation, defense cooperation remains strong. Economy remains the bedrock uh, in this transformation. Now the rupee ruble, as you understand better, the trade deficit of uh, 60 billion dollars in Russia's favor, just 5 billion dollars worth of India trade. How do you change that? How do you get rupee ruble exchange, which is the biggest hindrance apart from Western sanctions on Russia taking this relationship forward? How do you overcome those problems? That is the conversation that is taking place right now at the level of the dinner and then subsequently the directions that come from here, Rahul, uh, from the Indian Prime Minister to his delegation and the Russian President to his delegation will set the tone for the conversation tomorrow morning and take it forward. The aim is to have a result-oriented approach. A vision document may or may not come uh, right now, but keep, uh, keep it as, uh, you know, work in progress to ensure that there are positive outcomes, not just in thought, but in action on ground. Rahul. I won't hold you back from your live reportage. Gaurav Savan, thank you very much for joining us. Michael Kugelman joins us, uh, director at the South Asia Institute, the Wilson Center. 
uh, at Washington DC. This is a state visit that's happening at a time when NATO leaders will be gathering in Washington DC for a NATO meeting from the 9th and 9th to the 11th of July. Uh, from uh, Washington, uh, what's the view on Prime Minister Modi choosing Russia for his first state visit in his third term? Uh, well, certainly, uh, you know, here in Washington, uh, it's seen as uh, as as not a as not a good thing. Um, but I think that there's there's a lot to this story. Um, but my my broad view here is that the pageantry and the theater and the optics that we're going to be seeing over the next few days uh, in Moscow have an intended audience that goes far beyond India and Russia. And one of the main intended audiences is indeed uh, Washington, and Washington knows that. Um, but I, I think that you know, the visit and, and and the state of the India-Russia relationship now might not bode as poorly for the West, and particularly the U.S., as, as some might suggest. I mean, indeed, I know that one of the goals of this summit is to as your as as Garan said, take the relationship to another level. But I think that the 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 main goal of this summit is to essentially reinforce the strength and importance of the of the relationship in its current state. And the current state of the relationship is one that certainly is very strong, but it also has indicated certain things. One is that um, you know the trend lines of the relationship have not been as as positive as they had been in previous years. We've seen, for instance, India's share of. Uh, of arms imports from Russia have gone down, whereas uh, India's uh, security ties with the U.S. have never been stronger. So I think that's a significant point. And I, th I would another point I would make here is that um, the 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 India-Russia relationship does, I think, put a bit of a check on growing Russia-China cooperation, which is seen as a good thing here in Washington. If Russia wants to continue strong partnership with India, which I imagine it does, there are certain things that it'll need to be careful about doing. And that includes, among other things, being sure not to suggest that it would be willing to take China's side in the potential conflict between India and China. So bottom line, yes, uh, Washington is clearly not happy about this visit, but it's accepted it just as it's accepted the fact that India will continue to have a significant relationship with Russia. It will continue to import oil. It will continue to have that security relationship. But I think the view here, and this I share this view as well, is that the contours of the India-Russia relationship today uh, are not as strong and not as sharp as they had been uh, some years ago. Nandan Unikrishnan, you accept this, that while uh, India and Russia continue to remain important partners, the relationship isn't a patch of what it used to be before India became far closer to the U.S. than it was in the past, and that's really the new reality. You can say what you will, but uh, the fact is that India and the U.S. today are closer than India and Russia, and Russia is drawing closer uh, to Beijing uh, than to India. Firstly, uh, Rahul, thank you for inviting me. Uh, broadly speaking, yes, I mean, I agree with you, but <clears throat> let's not forget that uh, Russia is not the Soviet Union. So I think uh, comparing the Russian relationship, which we had when the Soviet Union was around, to the current relationship with the United States is a bit of apples and oranges. So that is one aspect. The second part is that I think uh, it is self-evident that uh, India's primary uh, concern is India's development uh, in that the United States and the West have a significant role to play. Uh, but uh, given the geopolitics of Asia, India is not about to forget what uh, Russia can contribute. And I think Michael correctly pointed out that Russia playing neutral in the conflict between India and Russia should be seen in Washington as a positive sign, not only in Washington, but across the globe, because that would mean that there is one more check to China's emergence as a hegemon, at least on the Asian continent. And uh, I also think that you have to take the size of the Russian economy into view before passing judgment on the depth and uh, width of the relationship with Russia. Given that Russia is a uh, one and a half trillion economy, India is already a three trillion economy. So the relationship of the past when Soviet Union was the giver and India the taker, I think may have actually changed. And this is the new reality that I think Mr. Modi and Putin will be discussing. Colonel Shukla, from a weapons perspective, from the lens of the Indian armed forces, 
which are the weapon systems which you think India would still want to buy from Russia? Or do you think, given the reality of how in the recent past, uh, Russia hasn't really been a reliable supplier of supplies and ancillaries that India really shouldn't be, apart from things like the S-400 uh, missile defense system where you don't really get that kind of a system from anywhere else. So apart from things which you can't pick up from anywhere else, are there still weapon systems that India is actively talking to and should be buying from Russia in your view? Uh, just uh, one quick point before I answer your question, and that is that uh, the India-Russia annual summit has been a feature of the relationship from 2000 uh, when uh, you know the disastrous presidency of uh, Boris Yeltsin came to an end and Putin and uh, Vajpayee uh, started off this annual tradition and it has continued without interruption for a long time it's a it's a it's a highly symbolic sort of uh, manifestation of their uh, actual closeness uh, as far as the uh, the weaponry that you're talking about, uh, India is already getting weaponry from the Soviet, uh, from uh, Russia, uh, that it was uh, sort of not likely to get from America. The S-400, you mentioned yourself, uh, but there is also the, the strategic uh, weapon systems, uh, the SSN that India will be building, that's uh, the uh, the submarine. submarine. Uh, the, these are all uh, weapon systems that are critical to India's defense, uh, and you know the the the, the American side uh, is far less inclined to play ball on these weapon systems than the Russian side. Uh, as far as the the China relationship goes, uh, it goes without saying. Everybody in the on the panel has been. I'm, I note unanimous on the on the fact that uh, India needs to balance the relationship with China with the Russia relationship. So I think uh, all in all, uh, this two and a half year gap has been uh, sort of uh, not a very welcome sign, uh, but it is uh, ascribable to the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, to the sort of Ukraine war and so on. Uh, I think that the uh, relations with the, the Russians will level back again, fall on an evil keel, and uh, the weapon systems that you mentioned will continue to flow.